Uh, well, before we get to uh, the sort of protocols and procedures you're putting in place to prepare for the start of, uh, of the year, uh, how are you viewing this uh, liability waiver uh, issue? What have you required of, uh, of students and faculty? Uh, we never even considered a liability waiver or an informed consent. That hasn't been part of our policy or part of our thinking. You haven't. Okay. And, and so uh, there were no advisors or anyone who said that that would be a good idea to, to, to actually do that? Um, I have to say we haven't considered okay. it and we haven't put one in place. We didn't, we didn't have it in athletics. We don't have it for our student body or workers. Got you. And um, so now you are uh, very much uh, on the cusp of uh, having everybody back to campus. I mean, tell us exactly what your plans are uh, for testing and, uh, and, and everything else as folks have returned. Sure, we're welcoming uh, 30,000 students back to our campus from 120 counties in Kentucky, 50 states, and more than 100 countries. <laughs> so we are testing everyone. We have five sites set up on campus. I visited all of those yesterday. It's going quite smoothly. We tested uh, around 6,000 uh, students. Um, 30 to 35 have been positive, so we have a 0.6 a percent uh, positive rate um, gives us a good target so that we can stay under that one percent. Uh, I think it uh, in talking to all the families and students uh, that I did uh, the past two days, they much appreciate the testing and then everything else we're doing, uh, redesigning our classroom so that we can respect the physical distancing and respect the physical distancing, uh, having adequate supplies of mask, uh, sanitizing solution. Uh, we have six million new square feet of space here so we can do the distancing a little easier. Every person is one person to a room. Um, we're not uh, sharing big rooms and so forth. So uh, we've done a lot, we think, to respect the CDC guidelines uh, and give our students a safe, safe environment in which to learn. Got a very ambitious plan with regard to testing and contact tracing and so forth. Uh, but Lexington is not a small town. And how can you control uh, students who go off campus to, say, go to parties or do shopping or go out to dinner and so forth? Uh, does that hinder your ability to kind of put a bubble around uh, the students on campus? It's a very good question. First of all, we set up our own contact tracing uh, platform. We work with the county <clears throat> so we can react quickly. Any positive tests we follow up, we have uh, full residences dedicated just for uh, isolation and quarantine, so we can quickly do that. We get food uh, to all our students who may be in those situations. And since we wired all our classrooms, you won't miss any class. There'll be two-way communication. So we're trying to take the uh, inclination that you're going to miss something uh, out of the equation so that you can make a safe decision. And yes, uh, many of our students do not live on campus. They live in the surrounding community. We're working very closely with our city um, to keep uh, a lid on any kinds of behaviors uh, that would lead to um, any spread of this disease. Our student code of conduct uh, applies to a student regardless of where they may reside. We think our students are responding positively. We'll be able to work with them to encourage these positive behaviors. But if anybody goes too far, we certainly will exercise those means.